crested geckos are often seen as the best pet gecko, period. But what if I told you there were five pet geckos that were even better? Today, let's go over the top five best pet geckos you could possibly own. My name's Adam, this is Chicken. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. You heard me right. This gecko's name is Chicken. I do not feel bad about it. I think it's hilarious and fits her. It's a lady gecko. I wanna go over some maybe not as well-known gecko species, cause crested geckos, I'm not gonna lie, are maybe the best gecko in the world. We did a whole care guide right here. You can watch it. But I wanna start with something that maybe you've never even heard of before and I got to see in the wild. We're talking about number five, satanic leaf tail geckos. Now these geckos are, well, they're leaf tail geckos and there's a lot of species of leaf tail gecko. A lot of them are from Madagascar and a lot of them are really cool but I don't know if there's any as cool looking as the satanic leaf tail gecko. Now, let me tell you, this was a dream to see in person. I got to travel all the way to Madagascar with some of my friends, and after a few days looking for other species, we hiked up this mountain looking for a dragon, and a dragon we found, a tiny one. We're talking like three, four inches, something like that. How the guides spotted this thing, I have no freaking idea. We're talking about the camouflage, even in person, even in captivity, if you say have an enclosure, 18, 18, 24, whatever, the enclosure size is, and you have one of these, and it's in plain sight on cork bark, you're gonna be looking for a while before you even see it. The camouflage is absolutely magnificent, it's beautiful, I can't even believe that people can find these things in the wild. But the nice thing is, in captivity, you can actually have them in a cohab situation, so have more than one in the same enclosure. If you do your research first, so learn how to do it, I'm just letting you know it's a possibility. They are nocturnal, so you're not gonna really see them out during the day, and they're insectivores, so kind of easy in my opinion to keep and I guess, in my opinion anyway, to have something that eats bugs is simple. You go to the reptile shop, you dust the whatever you buy there, crickets or whatever it is, crickets are gonna be what you're gonna feed mostly to these guys, and then you dump them in the enclosure, and then they eat the crickets, and then you clean up the poop. That's kind of it. Or keep them in a bioactive enclosure, and then you don't even really need to clean up poop. The, just the isopods will eat it, so. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And they like cool temperatures, which is amazing because I got a sunburn the day we were going looking for these things. And then you find them in these cool shaded areas where it's say, I don't know, like 15 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than if you were in the sun even 10 feet away. Number four, toke geckos. Now hear me out. I don't think these are for everybody. And I don't think they're, if you want a handling gecko, the best for you anyway. If you want the most beautiful gecko maybe to ever exist, that's arboreal and moves around a lot and has a really cool call. Toke geckos are for you. This is the second biggest species of gecko in the world. They're from Asia, places like Indonesia. I actually got to see some in the wild in Indonesia and Thailand. Very cool, and when we couldn't see them, I remember sitting in this hotel room in Bali trying to sleep at like two in the morning, and all I can hear is Toke. <laughs> Just like these crazy, it sounds like a Pokemon. You know how Pokemon say their own names? Well, that's basically what this is. And it looks like one too. And the cool thing is they're gonna eat things like insects. So you can train them if you have the patience of dying at Reptiliatus, which is the footage you're seeing here, to eat hornworms out of your hand or out of tongs, jump on top of you. But they're food motivated and if they're unsocialized, they're likely to bite and their bites suck. And their bites suck. It's fine, she landed on the Tripod. Now this video was a ton of fun to research, but something I never do is research anything on the internet without a VPN. So thanks to Surfshark who sponsored this video. Now I'm not saying that you have to be looking up reptiles to need a virtual private network, but basically what you're doing is protecting yourself and making sure no one else is seeing what you're doing on the internet. More or less, when your device connects to the internet, it's now encrypted. So anyone who tries to snoop you can't see what you're doing. Also it lets you travel the world, which I like to do, but virtually is a little bit easier. And with Surfshark, you can just change your IP address. So I live in Canada, so I can't see a lot of things on American Netflix. With Surfshark, I just change my IP address, I appear as if I'm in the US, and now I can see the entire catalog as if I was actually living there. And websites like Amazon or AliExpress that are sometimes blocked if you're traveling to a different country, well, you can download the VPN to your phone and Surfshark gets you around all that mess. Another thing I like to do is work in coffee shops. I like the rhythm to it, I like the atmosphere, I edit on a laptop there. 
But sometimes if I need to send a bank transfer, check a bank balance, it's not really safe to do that on somebody else's Wi-Fi or on data, unless you have a VPN because now it's encrypted. So now you can feel safe checking your bank balance even when you're not at home. And it doesn't stop there. I also have the antivirus, which is great because now my computer, it's a Windows computer, no longer feels vulnerable to things like viruses. So. Surfshark kind of has you covered with everything. And with 3,200 plus servers in a hundred different countries, anywhere you go, there's a server that's gonna fit your needs and they have 24 seven support. How about that? So go to the link below and use code Wiccans to get 82% off plus three free months. Three free months and 82% off. All you have to do is use code Wiccans at the link below. Surfshark, it's a no brainer. That's what I use and maybe you should too. Number three. Dune geckos or elegant sand geckos or short finger sand geckos. I'm talking about Stenodactylus Stenodactylus or really any of the Stenodactylus family because these are tiny little geckos from Northern Africa and from the Middle East. I think they're amazing. And my favorite thing is you can cohab them. I mean, do your research how to do it, of course, but in general, there's very little aggression even possible. Males are fine with males, fine with females. Females are fine with females and males. It's really interesting because most of the time, I would tell you to never cohab most reptiles. These guys are different and they're super tiny. So you could keep maybe a trio in a 10 gallon enclosure, which is unthinkable. I wouldn't even say to put one, say, crested gecko or one leopard gecko in a 10 gallon enclosure. Meanwhile, you can keep a trio of these guys and you can even keep a bigger number than a trio if you have a big enough enclosure. What's really cool also that is kind of breaking the norm of most lizards that I talk about is if you wanna keep them on sand, washed play sand, you can. Very little risk of impaction, because in the wild, they're actually found on loose sand. Sand dunes, dune geckos, it all makes sense. Now they're really small, so they're gonna eat small insects. They are insectivores, which I think is really, really cool. And I think that it's cool too that they're so easy to keep. Low humidity, the temperature is high, but not super high where it's difficult for them to be cared for. We're talking about like a 95 degree hotspot. This isn't a care guide. Go watch a Daffy's Reptiles or one of those really awesome channels that actually keeps these. I think Diana Reptiliatus keeps them now too. This should be just the top five geckos that Diana Reptiliatus keeps. <laughs> it's not funny. Reptiles, I have enough and I'm happy with the species that I have. I have basically all my dream species. But I do think that adding maybe a trio of these in a small enclosure would be really cool. And I guess they breed pretty easily too. Really tiny eggs. Number two, it's a gargoyle gecko, not a crested gecko. Now I used to have a gargoyle gecko. I like them. It's just, he wasn't very handleable in comparison to something like chicken. If chicken wants to be handled, or if I want to handle chicken rather, I just go in and grab her. With a gargoyle gecko, it was a mad chase, mad dash. And this isn't indicative of all gargoyles. I think that most gargoyle geckos you keep almost exactly like you keep a crested gecko, like almost identically. They're from New Caledonia. So there are some differences, super simple. I don't think there's very many things on this earth as simple to care for as a gargoyle gecko. And they come in so many really cool colors and morphs and patterns. They're so similar to crested geckos. I just didn't say crested geckos because this is part two of this video up here. So yeah, I mean, if you want a gargoyle or you want a crested gecko, you know, half dozen of one. They're all pretty similar. And if you care for one, you can care for the other one with little subtle differences that you're gonna know about because you're gonna do your research. We could even put Chihuahuas in here. I mean, Chihuahua geckos are similar enough as well. I keep them all in the same rack system, not a rack system, but in front opening enclosures on a rack, all side by side using the same linear bulb, same temperature, same humidity, so on and so forth. They're from the same island. I mean, figure it out. And number one. African fat tail geckos. Now my African fat tails are all breeding in the next room, so I'm not gonna actually handle one for you, but I have three of them. I love them, they're great. They're producing eggs this year. And if you want something that's not a leopard gecko, but is a leopard gecko, <laughs> I mean, in the way that it looks and acts, well, African fat tails are pretty darn similar. Now, of course, their eye shape is a little different. Their feet are a little bit different. Their color is a little bit different. But at the end of the day, it's a terrestrial or mostly terrestrial gecko that has functioning eyelids. Now you see here, chicken does not have functioning eyelids. She's actually going to lick her own eyelids. Okay, chicken had enough of me, so we'll put her back here and just finish it out by letting you know that African fat tail geckos are, well, they're gonna eat things like insects, so dubia roaches, crickets, black soldier fly larva, things like that. I'm almost out of breath, I had to go catch her. She ran across the room and behind the enclosures. Small, but not too small. They're not too fragile, which is what I love. So if you have a child, for example, and it's maybe, 
uh, younger. Always supervise your child with uh, an animal, reptile, cat, dog, whatever, but these animals can't hurt your child and they're gonna have a harder time hurting that animal than if it was something smaller. So they're good for responsible children, in my opinion. You can have them in a nice display. I mean, I don't, I'm not a really big fan of racks, but they do well in rack systems. But in my opinion, putting them in a 20 gallon enclosure, something like that, lots of hides, you know, a, a human hide and so forth. Like there's a care guide right here if you wanna watch it. I just think that they're beautiful, they're fun, they're great for handling. Overall, I think African fat tail geckos might be the best gecko as a pet that you could own. So there you go. Those are my top five coolest, best pet geckos that you could possibly own. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, please hit the subscribe button. It really, really helps this channel. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, extra videos. You guys get discounts on merch, all that and more for as little as $1 a month. Oh, and the new tier is where we have one-on-one -on -one conversations. All that and more, description below. And that's it, because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.